suppliers need and why. Um, yeah. So we've been in business for about five or six years. Before that, I was uh, flipping homes, did my first major project about 30 years ago when I had a two bedroom cottage ripped off the roof, put up four or five bedrooms and built a couple of houses after that. And then during the crash, so I was doing fix and flips and then got into home inspections. You'll see the team there in the bottom corner. Um, Good guy, oh, someone. Yeah, it's not on my screen. Oh, Someone else will have to do it over there. So if you call into the office, you'll speak to Teresa, who is bilingual, if you have people who speak Spanish. Um, she does, her, does an amazing job of whatever she can to accommodate your needs. And then there's uh, two inspectors besides myself, Michael, who's very experienced and been in construction for a long time. Michelle, who used to just have... Um, associates in electrical engineering, but also been in hospitality for a long time. So again, both people who work very hard to do whatever they can to, to help your buyers, as well as do a thorough inspection. Do you have termite inspectors? Sorry? Termite inspectors? Termite, yep. Yeah. We have a company that does that. And uh, with me today is Nancy Klein from Brightway Insurance. Right, Nancy. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Um, one thing, so, You've got her phone number there. You might like to put that into your phone. If you ever need a quote, great service. One thing I like about the Brightway and the coal agency is besides great service, they're very honest. They're not going to sell your clients a policy just because it's cheap to get the business. They're going to tell them what they, what they need and explain things properly to them. So hopefully... Uh, this is not a situation that you're going to face. And today we're going to try and help you to understand at least some aspects of the, of, of the inspection process so that you can minimize chance of things going wrong at that side of, of, the, of the transaction. So just a little quote that I like, never give up, today's hard, tomorrow's worse, but the day after tomorrow will be sunshine. Sometimes it's like that in business and as a realtor. So <laughs> what inspections do my buyers need and why? And this information hopefully will help you in all sorts of ways. I mean, it surprises me how many realtors don't understand the different inspections. Even realtors who have been in business for 10 years or more, they're not really, they don't really understand what the different inspections are and, and what they entail and why they needed and what's involved, et cetera, et cetera. And the more you know, it's like any sales thing, the more you know about your product and everything, the better you're going to be at it, the better credibility or the more credibility you're going to have with your buyers, the better job you're going to do, um, which of course is going to lead to more business for you. So the general home inspection is the standard home inspection that you know most people think about when they're buying a home. There's also the wind mitigation, which is, especially in South Florida, absolutely crucial. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The four-point inspection, which is, again, an insurance inspection. Basically, insurance company wanting to make sure that they're not going to have to pay out money in the short term. There's a termite inspection. Official, official term is a WDO, or wood-destroying organisms, because they also do report on wood rot besides termites. There's mold testing, there's seawall inspections if the property happens to be on the water. Mm -hmm. Do you do those? We have a diver that comes in and does those, yes. A septic tank inspections, if they happen to be in an area where they're on septic. Um, and in that case, they probably also need a well water inspection. So the general home inspection. Most two really important things you need to know about the general home inspection. First of all, it's a visual inspection. All right, so it's not going to find every single thing that's wrong with the home, it does have limitations. And the primary purpose of the general home inspection is firstly, to identify any major safety issues. And secondly, to identify any major problems. And 
really important thing when you're talking to your buyers, you want to let them know that and let them know that that's what you're looking for in the home inspection. You probably, the inspection report is probably going to come back with another 20 items, but every house has things that need to be fixed. There's always deferred maintenance on a home, uh, especially if they're first home buyers, because first home buyers get very nervous about, well, there's all these things that have to be done on the home. Hey, you're buying a, a house, of course, there's always going to be things, even if it's a brand new construction, nearly always there's still things that, that need to be done. So um, very, very important to, you know, set expectations for your buyers that this is really what we're looking for is major issues. Of course, there's going to be a, a bunch of uh, deferred maintenance that will probably need to be taken care of. So these are the secondary purposes, you know, a honey-do list, so they've got something to do on the weekend after they close, unless they want to go and get someone to do it. And of course, it's surprising, a lot of people never even take care of all those things anyway. Um, it's also going to have a, a summary description of the major systems, so we're going to let them know how old the roof is, how old the air conditioner is, how big the air conditioner is, um, information about their electrical panel and their water heater and that sort of thing. So that's going to be there as well. And we're also there to help educate the buyer, especially if they're first home buyers or if they're not from Florida and not used to uh, some of the things in, in houses here, especially air conditioners. A lot of people don't really know how to look after air conditioners to avoid issues down the road. Uh, the other thing that a lot of people don't realise that there is actually uh, standards of practice that home inspectors go by. There's a standard that are set in the Florida statutes. There's also standards set by different inspector associations. So home inspectors are supposed to go by those. Um, generally they do. Sometimes, you know, if you get a home inspector that's in and out of the house in less than an hour, probably not, but um, most of the time, they're going to go by those, but people's adherence to those is going to vary like everything else. You get people who do a, a thorough job and those who don't do such a thorough, thorough job. So these are the, the main systems that the general home inspection is going to cover. The roof, and that's a particularly important one. I'll talk about these things again later on. Electrical, air conditioning and ventilation plumbing, appliances. Um, technically, I think appliances are not actually part of the standards of practice, but it's something that everybody expects. So we do run the appliances for basic operation. We're not checking every feature on them, but making sure that they are basically working. Covers the interior. So, you know, looking at the doors, windows, oh, I see the windows, <laughs> windows, walls, ceilings, and everything else, pretty much everything we can touch and see. Um, and exterior, again, walls, windows, the eaves, gutters, driveway, paths, drainage, and all that sort of thing. And of course, structural, which is something a lot of people are very concerned about, of course. Swimming pools and irrigation. Now, again, it's technically, it's not part of a home inspection. Um, some people charge extra, some people don't do them, some do. We do include a uh, swimming pool inspection and check the sprinklers. Again, swimming pool inspection is a visual inspection. We can't tell if there's a leak or not um, from a, a visual inspection. The only way to really know that for sure is to have a, a leak detection company come in and to do that. Any questions about the general home inspection? You pull permits for your roofing, right? Or do you, do you do the roofing? Very good question. We do we do supply um, a copy of the permits with the report, and it's something that I encourage you to do as, as well when you might want to even before you get the home inspection. If you pretty much every city has it online, mm -hmm. so you can Google the city name and permit search, and most of the time it'll come up. Some of the small some smaller cities may not have it, but you can call the building department and they'll let you know as well. Do you get on? This might be a little off topic, but do you get a lot of um, sellers who want a home inspection prior to putting the house on the market? Not a lot, no. Um, it's something that would really be advantageous for a seller because the biggest thing that problem in a sale process is, you know, surprises. And uh, 
then all of a sudden they find out because sellers don't get on the roof. They don't, most sellers wouldn't have a clue what condition the roof is in. And a lot of the time they, they don't realize, especially if there's a flat roof that, hey, it's, you know, at the end of its life or close to the end of its life. Or and there's lots of little things that a seller can do as well to, you know, to take care of things before the inspection, make things go more smoothly. Anything else about the general inspection? And also on condos, you know, some people don't worry about on condos, but again, you've got, you know, you might have an air conditioner that has issues and, and plumbing and water heaters and so on. So it's always a good idea, even on, on condos, to have an inspection done. Actually, this week we had two condos. Uh, one, well, it wasn't a home inspection, it was a mold inspection. He came back from uh, not being in there for a while and the whole place is just covered in mold. He's even had the air conditioner running, but um, this year for some reason, the um, humidity got too high and the, the whole place, all these antique furniture, it's just, it's just smothered with, with mold. Oh yeah. my God. Pretty bad. <laughs> so four point inspections. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> who, who can tell me when you need a four point inspection? You want insurance discounts, right? Yeah. Not for discounts, Mortgage. but to get insurance. Actually, this, insurance. let me go to the next thing. So first of all, it covers the four main systems, right? So roofs, electrical, plumbing, and air conditioning. <laughs> Should I call it? Oh, electrician. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the insurance company wants to make sure that they will minimize their chance of having to pay out. So they don't want to insure a house and then have to scary. pay out. And, and, and especially now, I mean, being in South Florida, Insurance. This is insurance is is such a big issue for buyers down here because it, it's so expensive in South Florida. Um, people could be paying as much as six or seven thousand dollars in insurance on a twelve hundred square foot home if they don't have discounts. Or you could be in a new home that's three thousand square foot and be paying you know twenty five hundred three thousand. You know it varies a lot depending on the home and how new it is and what what things it has. And um, as Nancy will tell you, um, a lot of insurance companies are pulled out of South Florida, so it's getting harder and harder. And what the four point, depending on what comes up on the four point, it'll dictate what insurance companies are going to even consider insuring your home. Now, some insurance companies, I believe, won't even insure a home that's more than two years old now. So about everything that's older and older, then you get pushed back to fewer and fewer choices with insurance companies until all you're left with is citizens who are seem to be taking over. So Nancy. Yes. On a four point, what exactly are you looking for? Well, most, most, let me go through all of this and then but I'll you share probably it's and the and then first you, one. Nancy, it's the most important. It's the most important to her. Yeah. So why is it is it needed? Basically so you can get insurance like I just explained. So secondly, it was the question I asked before, when is a four point inspection needed? Mm -hmm. Anybody wanted to? Yeah, but we, does every oh. house, does every oh. house need a four point? Oh, um, is it like, oh, so sorry, depending on the age. No, it's exactly, it's exactly right. Age. If it's if it's less than 30 years old, most insurance companies don't require it. If you're with Allstate, even if it's only 10 years old, all state is going to want a four point inspection. They have their own, which is a little bit even more detailed than the standard form that most carriers use. So most carriers use the citizens form, which is what we do. Um, all, all state, is it all state or state farm? I keep getting them mixed up. It's going to ask for a little bit extra information as well. Um, sometimes too, if it's if the house is built in the early 90s, even though it's not quite 30 years, uh, some insurance companies are going to want a four point inspection report. And it's really a, you know, a cut down version of the main report. It's really, it's nowhere near as thorough. It's just giving the basics of the age and that it's in okay condition um, of, those, of those four main systems. So what makes a house fail a four point? And, when we, and that's really what it comes to with a four point. And if you wanna jump in anytime, Nancy, do so. But a four point is not really about how much you're gonna pay for insurance except as far as who, what carrier you can end up with. So that's where it can save your money. Like if the water heater is more than 15 years old, then some carriers aren't gonna to wanna to insure it. So again, things that are gonna limit your choice of carriers, 
getting a better carrier and a better price. But mostly it's a, it's a pass fail type situation with a four point. But if it fails, it doesn't mean you can't do the deal. It just means, hey, let's get those, let's get those things fixed so that you it's can move ahead. It's more of a detailed report. Um, you don't ever receive credits from a four point. You receive the credits from the wind bit, which Phil will explain later on. But um, a four point shows, um, you know, what needs to be fixed? What are areas of concern? And this is great for your buyers because it helps the buyer be more aware of what the inspection truly says. Mm -hmm. Sending out Phil, who's extremely thorough with everything that he does, this is the result of that. Um, you never want anybody to, uh, you know, do a disservice to your to your client by not marking this up, by not putting it in in, in writing, because this will help everybody. Less aggravation and an easy close. <laughs> How about with uh, co-ops? <laughs> so as Nancy said, roofs, that's a, the most critical area when it comes to insurance mm -hmm. because roofs here do not last very long, which is a bit of a shock to me coming to, uh, to South hey, Florida. Phil, so, you know, Phil, so Diana asked a question, but you guys didn't hear her. Oh, Diana, sorry. you want to ask again? Hi, Philip. I, what I was asking is about co-op co-op versus condos so the four point inspection isn't it doesn't necessarily apply to a co-op right because it's association oh, or thank you thank you very much for asking that question the same with condos um i've had i think two two or three requests for a four point on a condo it's extremely rare that an insurance company will ever want a four point inspection on a condo so yeah, very good question. As, but I do, but in wind mitigations are usually very helpful. But yeah, forget about four points, generally speaking, when it comes to a condo. No, I'm, I'm asking about a co-op. Well, the same, yeah, the same with a co-op. So yeah. It's the same, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so life expectancy on roofs. And it's no good if just to say, hey, the roof's good today, as far as insurance company is concerned, that doesn't mean anything because it used to be they would insure as long as we could say there was one year life left on it. But now citizens won't insure it unless this, the uh, inspection re report says or the four point report says there's at least three years life left on it. A lot of insurance companies will want the roof to have at least five years life left on it. So um, it becomes a very tough thing when you get an older roof and sometimes with older roofs, I mean, you can't tell exactly how long a roof's going to last. Uh, a six-year-old roof could could leak. And the more complex a roof, the more chance it has of leaking. But so, but it's really good for you as a realtor to have a rough idea of how long different roof types should last. So a flat roof, we've got 10 to 15 years. Sometimes you'll, you'll get them to 20, but um, generally speaking, you know, 15 years is you know, at that age, most flat roofs are going to start to have issues and need either repair or replacement. So is it, if it's a 20 year flat roof, you're not going to insure it? It well, depends. Let's say that we're not going to insure it. What will happen is we'll have to see the particulars of the entire home. Mm -hmm. It's up to the carrier to say, hey, listen, this part of the roof is a flat roof. It, there's some wear and tear. We'll take, we will insure you, not every carrier will, we will insure you. However, you have a particular time frame to replace the flat roof portion, which is fairly inexpensive compared to, you know, the, the primary yeah, roof, yeah, you know? And so if my, it's- My okay. piece is just kind of like stuff that always gets hung up with me, especially when it comes to like either moving forward on the transaction, especially if there's financing involved, yeah. um, that when it gets to that close, uh, of the life of the roof, which I you know we settled this before, where we can kind of we get it at a higher rate and then just redo the roof, uh, and then get the rate. You can change, provide right? that the that that the home fits and you know the, the parameters of what the carrier will will accept. Okay. You could go into the primary market, but there's several factors. There's primary and then there's secondary. Primary market is A rated. You're only qualified for a very small amount. 
but you may be able to go into the secondary market uh, where they don't care about anything, but you'll pay a considerable amount of money. But uh, there are a lot of things that, that you know, come into factor, one, where the home is, and two, um, what the four points says. Mm -hmm. But so how does that work with, uh, with condos? What do we do? What do we do? <clears throat> Like, do they have to fix it before they can sell it? Or well, what's the um, outcome? What happens is if the roof needs to be replaced uh -huh. or fixed, yeah. um, certain carriers will ask for a stipulation. And that says you have to, the buyer has to hire a roofer, go into contract, show documentation that it will in fact be fixed. Some of them have a guy, have, you know, a, a time frame of up to 60 days. Not every carrier will do that. Citizens, as of now, to my knowledge, is the only one that will. Okay, that's how we did it. Yes. We, we had a very old roof, and it's happening more and more with sellers. Yes, it is. Is they're like, I'm not paying. Look at this market. Like, it's because I'm not Mr. paying for Mrs. this. Joe right? Smith, that have not yeah. gone up on their roof in several years. Yeah, no one around to help them. Right, no family, no children. Right, they do need our help, and right. you know that's the beauty of what Bill and I do is that we are there to help and to educate and to give alternative, you know. Solutions. Directions and solutions. Correct. So they can get a stipulation that says they have time to fix it afterwards. Correct. And if, as long as that's the only issue. Okay. Someone else had a question? No? Okay. They were trying to convince me. And I was like, um, shingles, <laughs> typically 15 to 20 years. And again, you've got two different shorts, sorts of shingles the three tab and the dimensional. So the three tab that's more of a flat layer, whereas the dimensional as the name suggests, have more, have more layers on them. Uh, a lot of carriers, once you get to 15 years, they won't uh, cover a shingle roof. Um, some will go to 20 years. After 20 years, I think you're pretty much stuck with citizens, as long as there is life left on the roof. And again, once you get to 20 years on a shingle roof, you, it's not many, not many roofs, shingle roofs are going to last past 20 years. Sometimes they do a lot of patching and so on, but you know, that's pretty much, you know, at the end of their life. Concrete tile roofs, a little, little bit more, can be 25 to 30 years. Again, anything past 25 you, is sort of touch and go. We do definitely see roofs that will go to 30 years. It depends on a lot of factors. And the important thing to know too with, with roofs, it's the tiles are not the waterproof barrier. The tiles are decorative and they're to protect the underlayment. It's the underlayment that's the waterproof barrier. So even if the tiles are in good condition, the underlayment starts to break down and that's where you end up with leaks. And of course, you know, once you, there's so many homes now that are, you know, built, were built 25 to 30 years ago, coming to that age where they, they need to be replaced. So it's, it is a big issue. Yeah, the 25 years, probably yeah. a max that I've seen really, not a 30. They're like really pushing on that 25 mark. I would imagine that a 30 would, you could probably get to 30 if you maintain your home, your mm -hmm. roof properly. Okay. And if it's a simple roof too, but yeah, and certain neighborhoods, you'll find some neighborhoods where the roofs were done better that they you know, they're lasting to closer to 30 years. Okay. And again, and then also the other thing is whether the, um, you know, people have different approaches to things. Some people don't want to take the risk of having to do a repair and they just want to replace the roof. Other people want to get the most out of it. But, and it, it's going to be usually in the valleys or in the penetrations, you know, like with the plumbing vents and roof vents where you're going to get your leaks. Um, so if people take care of those, then you know they might pay a little bit of extra life out of it. So an you know, example of flat roof that's been patched, you can see the granules are really thin. So when it's something like that, you know, you know it's at the end of its life. Now here's uh, you may or may not be familiar with elastomeric coatings. So it's like a silicon based coating. A lot of people put them on flat roofs. Uh, you'll find a lot of older areas they have them on tile roofs as well. Yeah, they're putting them on warehouses too, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got, you won't really see elastomeric so much. It, it looks similar, but it's a membrane called TPO. 
which they tend to put on commercial buildings and sort of like a vinyl. Um, that's what you're more likely to see on a commercial building. Now it can be a, a good temporary you still have the same vision again? fix for a, a flat roof if you need a bit of extra life, but there are some caveats. You know, the, the roof can't be in such bad condition that it's not going to seal. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen did a commercial building where it was one year old and it was just peeling off, you know, it didn't do any good at all. Um, and the, you've got a few variables. One, the roof has to be in okay condition, has to be prepared properly. And the quality of the coating varies a lot too. You can buy a cheap one, you can buy an expensive one. The roofer who does it, you know, they might do a good job, they might do a poor job. You know, you see the whole range. You'll get some roofers who will give a five-year warranty on it. Doesn't really mean much because if it leaks, probably all that means is they're going to come back and put a bit more on there. But um, but at least they're, you know, they try. Yeah, they're trying to say that they, get, you know, they're going to stand behind their product to some extent. Is it made of silicon? The... Yeah, yeah, it's a silicon-based. It's uh, it's like a really heavy paint. It's very easy to put on. And you do it yourself. You can do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. So it comes in five gallon buckets and you can just pour it on and roll it out. So it doesn't take much to do, but you know, it needs a couple of coats, needs to be done really well if it's going to um, be effective. The other benefit of it is that it reflects over 80% of the heat. So if you have a flat, you know, a flat roof over a Florida room or something, it can really help to, to make it a lot cooler. How often do you see this? It's pretty common. Yeah. Yeah. What's the lifespan? Well, <laughs> If you read the tin, it it's can like be anything from seven years to 25 years, but usually people replace, will put a new coating on after four or five years and, re, and keep redoing it up, you know, every four or five years. That is a 25, that's like... Yeah, that's the warranty on the can, but, you know. Seven and 25. Seven and 25, like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some manufacturers yeah. give us... Less than 13, 13. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... You know, often people do this when, you know, in a, at a sales situation where all of a sudden they find out, hey, the roof's, you know, pretty old and we can't get insurance because of that. And so this is a, a you know, an interim measure. I mean, and it depends if you sometimes it may be worth spending a little, I mean, depending on the, how much they're going to charge you to do this, you might be better off to spend the extra and put a whole new roof on. But it does have the benefit of reflecting the heat, so... Hmm. Um, again, um, you some older roofs, the one on the left, you can see it's had a lot of shingles replaced over time. So that's definitely going to be past its, past its life. Now, when it comes to concrete tiles, pretty much every concrete tile roof is going to have broken tiles on it. And the standard fix is usually just to glue them back together unless they're totally, totally destroyed. Um, and insurance companies, and, and they should, you know, we don't necessarily, unless it's really bad, we may not put it on the four point as, a, as an issue, but sometimes what happens, insurance companies will send someone six months down the road and they do a drive by to have a look at the property or look at the roof. And if they see cracked tiles or they see the roof doesn't look too good, then they'll cancel the policy. So it is important that if they do have cracked tiles on the roof, they do get them repaired. Would they replace that tile or would they try to? The one on the right? Well, the one on the right, they'd have no choice, but the one on the left. Yeah, they're just all, they're just all being glued. Glued, that's fine. That's, that's a normal thing. As long as it, sometimes the glue fails over time, it has to be redone, but you know, as long as it's tiles holding together, so it's not gonna blow off and it's protecting the underlayment, that's fine. Any questions about roofs? Mm -hmm. All right, let's move to electrical. So older older homes built, um, particularly in the 70s and early, well, even some in the 80s, you're going to find there's four brands of electrical panels you need to remember. Mm -hmm. Anybody tell me any of those brands? Some are more, more notorious than others? Yeah, no. Uh, is it GM? General Electric. General Electric's General fine. Pacific, Federal Pacific is the most notorious one. You see the one on the top left, it just says stab lock on it, but you'll find on the label it says Federal Pacific. 
Um, and then Sylvania, mm -hmm. the Challenger, and then the one that's not up there is Zinsco. So these are considered unreliable. They've all had issues with, uh, with them. Yeah, because the breakers may not trip if there's a, an over, if there's a surge in current. And if they don't trip, then the wires could overheat. It could end up with a fire. Some things I never understand when people flip homes, like they'll do all the work. Except the electrical panel. For yeah. the they'll put all this lighting, <laughs> all this new lighting, and they have this the oldest panel known to man. Well, like, there's there's two reasons for one for that. One is ignorance. The other one is, you know, one of the models of flippers is lipstick on a pig. So right. all they're doing is trying to make it nice for as little money as possible. And rather than do a complete thing. But yeah, if you find a, if it's a flip home built in the 70s or earlier, definitely yeah, look for look a little bit deeper because it might look beautiful, but it, you know, it, it might have a myriad of major issues yeah, and, and be all, uninsurable. With all the new lighting that like we have now, those panels would, I mean, they can't really handle that. Well, a lot of the new lighting is actually lower voltage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in terms of amperage. Sometimes you'll see that where the house, you know, Miami have a 100 amp panel was built in the 50s or 60s, whereas today most new homes are going to have 150 or 200 amps. So sometimes what is the fourth that. fourth brand that you mentioned that's not on this um, slide? Zinsco, Z I N S C O. How much? How much does it cost to like replace the all electric? Good question. To replace a panel can be anything from. $800. Um, I mean, if it's a smaller panel inside, it could be, you know, 800 to $1,000, but it could be as high as $2,000 if it's a major panel. Mm -hmm. So if you, and sometimes it's just one panel and it depends. Some houses have, you know, a main service panel outside with the main breaker and then the mm -hmm. sub panel inside. I find a lot of um, homes, newer homes, particularly in Boynton, they only have one panel in the house. Will be in the garage they just have one panel but if it's if it's a those ones they're usually fine anyway it's the older the older homes and sometimes i have one good panel and one bad panel sometimes i've changed out one panel so to change both panels it could be anything from two to four thousand dollars mm. know, it depends on the electrician depends how complicated it is depends whether they're pulling a permit which is another whole issue um you know it's it's, it's one of those things it's always better to pull a permit but it's going to be more expensive because it's a lot more running around for the contractor it's a lot of hassle for them so they're probably going to charge an extra five hundred dollars for the running around but if they, if you do pull a permit you know it's always better there's more chance the contractor is going to do it right because they know someone is going to be checking up on them to some extent not that they always you know have time to do a proper check when the but there is more accountability, that's right. And they, they are supposed to pull a permit. If you do anything electrical, it's supposed to have a permit. So that's the, the biggest issue with electrical, but there are other things that can, can fail um, a four point. So that whole list there is, that list is actually on the four point report and insurance company wants to know if any of those issues are on there. The most common one is what they call a double tap breaker. Uh, usually because they've added something extra to the house, like a microwave, or if it's an older home, it may not even have had an air conditioner. So now they've added an, added an air conditioner, to double tap the breakers. Again, most of the time, there's not an issue, but there is that risk of overheating, sparking and so on. And so insurance companies want that corrected. So basically anything that's unsafe or a fire hazard, the... Uh, insurance company is going to want corrected, but usually they're fairly easy to correct. So it's not, it's not that big a deal. Um, I don't know what I have. There's one thing I don't have on here. And there's not many places I see it really. Um, if anybody does any work in Tamarack, in the mainlands, in that area, majority of homes in there have aluminum wiring. Um, you don't have to rewire the whole house. There are special connectors they can put in to, to fix that because aluminum wire expands and contracts so it can come loose. So they put special connectors in. So it does, again, it doesn't have to be a deal killer. It's just a matter of someone has to pay for an electrician to come in and correct it. Any questions about electrical? How are we going for time? Time. It's time.
10 50. I'm sorry, 11 15. Oh, I better get moving. Sorry. Um, insurance companies don't really like fuses. You're not going to see too many of those these days. They're mostly being updated. Okay, plumbing. I mentioned, um, you know, water heaters are the big thing. And again, age of water heaters, it can vary from 10 to 20 years. And it depends too if the sometimes you might see a really old water heater that's great because you can do maintenance, you can replace the elements in it. They even have a what they call a sacrificial rod inside. If you replace that, the water heater is going to last longer. But uh, any signs of leakage and corrosion and so on, it's going to have to be corrected. Um, but again, a water heater to replace, typically you're looking somewhere around a thousand dollars. So no, ho hopefully it's not. I mean, for some people it is, but um, this one's more of a deal breaker. Um, polybutylene pipes, they say that every house with polybutylene is going to leak at some stage. The, it's usually at the fittings, but they do corrode from the inside. The important dates you need to know for these are 1975 to 1996. You find millions of homes had these. You can't always find it. In fact, as inspectors, it's, we're not required to find it, but we definitely do look for it because as I, sometimes they, it is hidden inside the walls and they have copper stubs, so you can't tell. But if you see that gray plastic pipe, if you look under the sink or where the toilet pipe goes into the wall, it has, usually has a little metal cover, but behind that, have a look. If you see that gray plastic pipe, then it's polybutylene. Could be seven to ten to fifteen thousand dollars even to repipe the whole house, which is the only way to do it. And if you don't do it, you're not going to get insurance, pretty much, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Some carriers um, uh, will look at this um, and uh, based on other schematics of the home, um, it, it would it definitely not go into the primary market. Yeah. yeah, it would definitely not. Um, but you know, they a lot of times on the full point, it'll repair. show if it's the original piping of the home. Mm -hmm. If you have a home that's over 30 years old, mm -hmm. um, uh, the likelihood of getting insurance um, in the primary market is extremely slim. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of factors that go on. Some carers will in fact take this. Well, what I'm way. saying is like, what's the, the same way with the roof then? They give you time to be able to do that because that's um, a huge... The problem is, is that people are more than likely to replace a roof because they'll get a credit. Mm -hmm. um, they may not get a credit for this type of typing in the home. So um, you may get citizens to back this up. Okay. Um, so basically I don't think citizens Cash well, buyers, it's it's just cash buyer to okay. redo the plumbing. Yeah, I mean, okay. if you have a cash buyer um, and they That's, know that the whole house has right. been gutted and done, but you know, uh, carers are really finicky these days. But this, so they may look at one thing. This is huge, though. You just basically back away. Yeah, or uh, they have to. It's not. Hand. It's not always a deal breaker, though. I'll yeah, and some that. and sometimes sellers will give a credit. Yeah. And sometimes sellers will replace it. It uh -huh. just you know every case. It's different. It just depends on yeah it really on the people depends involved. Depends on the schematics of the home. But does the inspection always find out about that, or sometimes oh, nobody? Oh, it's always it's, it's always, it's always yeah. on. Yeah, it's this always is on. the four point. This though, is the four point. So this would be the five. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then cast iron pipes. Oh. Again, any any house built before 1976. Not every house, but 90 99 percent. I have seen PVC on homes built in 1974. I think 73 even. But it's pretty Sorry, I have a useful. question. Yeah. So, um, with 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 the pipes that we were just viewing, that's only through four point. It's not through general plumbing. Well, for insurance purposes, I mean, it's going to be listed on the general inspection report. But for insurance purposes, these are uh, are okay. issues. But it yeah. will be identified on the general. Oh, um, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. The general inspection is is always far more detailed than the four point. Yeah. Thank you. So you can see here, you know, if you have a crawl space, which is usually, I mean, these are from crawl spaces. When you get into a crawl space, so usually if they have cast iron, there's always issues because those are really older homes. I know if it has a concrete slab, like most homes built in the 50s and 60s and 70s that have cast iron, there's no way to see the condition of it unless you get a plumber to put a camera down there and do what they call a sewer scope. And, um, 
that's the only only way that you're going to know that the condition of those pipes and it is very expensive if you do have to replace them um, if you have to replace all the pipes it can be anything from ten to thirty thousand dollars so um, but pretty i mean we're looking at you know everything east of 95 yeah right you know and and some west of 95 so it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of homes that have cast iron um, some of the older homes, you might find some galvanized piping as well, which tends to corrode on the inside and lead can leach out of it. So it is an issue, but that's pretty rare. You're not going to come across very much of that around the really older old homes. Okay. Yeah, whenever we see a word we don't know, we call you, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, what's this kind of thing? <laughs> um, air, air conditioning, sorry, is the other. Um, thing that the insurance companies want to know about. As long as it's in working condition, I'm not sure aware of any issues with air conditioning from insurance companies. Um, they, they don't want to see an old unit at all. That last, that the unit be replaced, I want to say it's 15 years. 15 years, yeah. 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 I mean, after 15 years, um, you really you generally don't have much life. I mean, occasionally you'll have one that that might last in the 20 and 30 years, especially sometimes in a condo where they haven't used it much, you know, you might have an, a really old one. Or if it's been repaired, sometimes they might have replaced the compressor mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, it might be older. I've not really seen too many homes with, with um, much older, unless again, it has to yeah. be Okay. The compressor and the handler is what I always find is the major thing. Like they've replaced one and not the other or right. whatever. And technically like by code, you're supposed to replace supposed both to replace these both. days, but okay. yeah, a lot of people don't. So they're your four main things for the four point. Um, they need to be basically in good working order and safe and the roofs need to have some life left on them for the insurance companies to give you some insurance. And you generally need it on homes more than how many years old? Oh. No, no, how, how old, oh. which homes do you need to have a four point done on? Mortgage, uh, somebody's got financing. No. It's not on every home, remember? It's only on homes that are so a certain age, 30 years. 30 years or more, generally speaking, generally speaking. Yeah. Okay, wind <laughs> mitigation. So <laughs> I'll, let me try and get through this a little bit quicker. Um, there's a lot to remember on this. You don't really need to know all of it, but so, this is where you get your discounts and this is where you know the insurance cost can vary <laughs> tremendously you know it could it could be double depending on what credits the home has i love your little humor <laughs> so and and it's not just i mean most people when they think of of hurricane discounts they think of impact windows or impact shutters but that's only one factor out of seven or eight mm -hmm. okay so Pretty much every house is going to get some type of insurance discount. It's very rare that that they don't these days. So there's a diagram that sort of summarizes all the different things. So mm. bottom left hand corner, the roof geometry, the different types of roof, a hip roof versus a non-hip roof. You have a look at you can see the, how the hip roof, it's all on a slant. So it's much better in hurricanes. That's one of the biggest discounts you can get for wind insurance. Um, you're also going to get a discount just for that. In the top right hand says the age of the roof covering. So if the building code changed in Miami and Broward in 1994 and the rest of Florida, you want to know when it changed in the rest of Florida? It was much later. It's in 2000. 2001. So if the roof has been put on after the building code changed, then they're going to get a discount for that. It's on FBC. The yeah. straps. Yeah, we'll get to that. And then the age of the home is the same. So if the home, again, Broward and Miami, if the home was built after 1994 mm -hmm. and it's from the application date. So there's a lot of homes were built in 94, but the application was before the code changed. Mm -hmm. So they don't get the credit. But if it's after that or after 2001 in the rest of Florida, that's another credit. Not flat roof, 
like in case of flat off. Yeah, it's not going to get the discount, right? No, and, no. Oh, but it can get a win. It can pass a yeah. inspection of win. Yeah, well, win mitigation is not a pass or fail. The win mitigation oh. just determines determines how many yeah. discounts or Got credits it. you'll get. So it's going to determine how much you're going to pay. And that's going to be really important when people are getting a mortgage because if their insurance is sky high, that's going to affect how much money they can borrow. Um, so hurricane straps, that's what's called the roof, um, the roof to wall connection. So they're the straps that go into the wall over the truss to stop the roof from blowing away. I'll show you pictures of those in a moment. And the roof deck attachment is what the, the nails that are holding the roof deck to the to the roof frame to the trusses and then we get to the protected openings of windows and doors the roof deck attachment is really important because if you think of it more nails more credits yeah and less they're required nails, when they re-roof when when they re-roof they're required to re-nail the deck so mm -hmm. it's very rare that you don't see a house that get, getting that discount okay so this is what i was saying before about the building code mm -hmm. um so the roof to deck condition connection. So this is the, the nails. They have to be you know, two and a half inch nails. So you can see two inches below the roof deck coming in every six inches. Now, the, what everyone talks about, the hurricane straps. So that's a generic term. The older homes if built in the 50s generally don't have hurricane straps. Sometimes it's called a toenail. If it doesn't have a hurricane, proper hurricane strap, they classify it as a toenail. That could be a nail holding it in, or it could be some of them do have brackets, but they, they don't have enough nails. So it's still classified as a toenail. So there's no discounts for that. And that can add a lot to insurance. Um, we've got, so this is a hurricane strap that's called a clip. So it doesn't mm -hmm. wrap over the, the truss. It has to have at least three nails to get a discount. Again, some of the really old homes and only have two nails, so no discount. Um, so this is a typical one you're going to see is a single wrap where it wraps, you can see it's embedded into the concrete wall and then it goes over the truss and down the other side. And again, it has to have as a minimum number of three nails, has to be in the right place. So some homes built in the 60s and 70s are going to have the right nails, some are not. But there are companies that will retrofit these. So there are companies that will go in and put the extra nail in if it doesn't have hurricane straps, sometimes they'll put special brackets in and usually it'll pay for itself within a couple of years. So that is something that can be retrofitted. That's definitely an expectation that people always ask. Well, if I have the roof retrofitted, mm -hmm. will I just immediately save money? No, it takes a few years, like three or four years, depending to on- To pay it the, back, I mean? Yeah, for a discount. Well, can, to get the discount or to- You don't get the discount right away. You know, because you're spending a lot of money. So let's just say you spend fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. to which you're not going to get a fifteen hundred dollars. Oh no, right. Yeah. yeah. Insurance. So maybe it'll save you five hundred dollars and it'll take you a few years, yeah. depending what else the house has, because depending what credits has, because they they max out at a certain level. So the more credits you already have, the extra things you do are going to have less impact. Um, and that's a double wrap where you'll see it's got two two straps wrapping over the, the truss. It doesn't necessarily, and there's not much dis difference in discount between a clip and a single wrap or a double wrap. It's pretty much the same for most carriers. Do you address HO3 or six? Sorry? HO3 versus HO6? Well, that's, the HO6 is a condo policy. Yeah. So um, I'll come back to that okay. in a moment. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, so again, your roof geometry, you can see the different types of, of roofs there um, and a lot of people have a get, have a hip roof but then they have a flat section at the back and so they don't get any credit as a result of that it's pretty common and they have to have at least 90 percent of the roof has to be a hip so sometimes you find a small gable yeah. if it's less than 90 less than 10 percent then they'll still get the credit so in general flat roof is less safe against hurricanes compared to hip roof well, I think probably the reason is for, for leaks. I don't know whether they're necessarily going to blow off more easily, yeah, yeah. but they're, um, they're probably more prone to leaks in a hurricane. They're not as stable. Yeah. yeah. And I how, guess they can you, lift the edges. How do you identify the hip roof? Is it the, the sides or? The whole, well, yeah, the whole roof has to be on a slope, like you'll see in the, in the top of that picture. 
Right. Got it. Um, and then opening protection. So, so then if there's a flat piece, this has come up quite a yeah. bit with that. So if there's there's the roof, then there's a little flat piece over the porch. Yeah, then like don't have a look at consider it that or no? Yeah, correct. So now okay. right, you can see that's what's happened there. Yeah, okay. So they've got that flat section. So that section is no longer a, okay. a hip. So opening protection. So there's different ratings. If all of your doors and windows are hurricane protected, it's considered an A1 rating. Mm -hmm. If just your windows are protected, but not your doors, that's an A3 rating. Um, and it goes by the weakest link. So you might have every window has been replaced and you've got a, a beautiful front door, but the glass in it is not impact rated. You think it is, a lot of people think it is because mm -hmm. it's safety glass, it's pretty strong. Um, it's not going to get the discount. Mm -hmm. And you'll find a lot of you'll find a lot of inspectors, well, I don't say a lot, but sometimes you'll find inspectors give it a rating because they think that it's impact rated. Um, and it's not always easy to tell, but if it says tempered safety glass, then it's not impact. Often it'll be tempered on one glass, which is okay, but the other side has to be impact mm -hmm. rated. So you have to look at the etching in the glass. Yeah. Hopefully it has a label as well. Hopefully it has a permit. Carers will we ask for that if they don't see yes. it. Uh -huh. they, if, they, if they're unsure, they'll come back and say, we need an I'm actual sure. photo of the I'm etching sure. or sticker yeah. that says it. And you can get those from people? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, if there's etching the glass. Glass. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If not, when the inspector goes out, you know, they'll, they always come back and ask for like the silliest of things the when things it could know. have been, mm -hmm. but you know, it happens. And you need permit mm -hmm. to install the. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Even it's the hurricane, be hurricane panels, oh, you need yeah. a permit too. Yeah. And on hurricane panels, if you find the accordions, Again, the insurance companies want verification that it's impact rated. So mm -hmm. usually we're looking for a label on it or a permit, but some, you know, sometimes that label's gone over time and we can't verify it. Yeah. Um, and then with the hurricane panels, again, they should have an etching on it to tell you whether it's rated or not. There are some panels, I don't think I have a, I don't have a picture here. There's not that many around. Mm -hmm but you'll see some of the orange peel texture mm -hmm. on them and then they're not impact rated, but most of the time you'll find that they are. And these ones are not impact rated, those old clam <laughs> shell shutters or the roll down shutters, they're not impact rated. So no and discounts. And all of this is no. just who pays for what at the bottom line, yep. right? Yeah. Like yep. It's gonna determine how much their insurance is gonna cost. Impact doors. Um, Again, they should have a sticker on them saying that they're impact rated and they should be, some people just put them in um, without putting them in properly. They're supposed to have special Tapcon screws all the way around. Otherwise, in a strong hurricane, that door could actually blow out. It's not just to stop missiles from breaking it down. Garage doors, um, again, you know, they really should have something on them to verify that they're, they're impact rated. A lot of people don't know that question. Yeah, the answer to if that they question. don't have it on the garage door, is there a way to uh, determine whether it is or not just by looking at, at them or as far as quality not or? not necessarily? I mean, there are some things you can look for, but it's not always a guarantee. There's usually going to be at least seven bolts holding the 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 frame to the holding the, the garage door to the frame, mm -hmm. seven to nine bolts, um, and it should have horizontal bracing. But just because it has that doesn't guarantee that it is impact rated. Sometimes if they have a serial number from the manufacturer, we can contact the manufacturer and find out from them. Um, other than that, we can also look and see if there's a permit. But if we don't have any of those things, then we can't really verify it. Okay, so... Um, question about HO6 versus HO3 policy. Um, so for a condo, a lot of people don't think about a wind mitigation for a condo because hey, the association pays insurance, but the HO6 policy is what covers, basically they call it walls in. So everything from the wall in is a responsibility of a homeowner. 
And so insurance companies will still give a discount on the HO6 policy, won't be as much as a homeowner, you know, a house, but they'll still get a discount if it has certain things, if it has impact windows, or if it's a tall condo building, it probably has a concrete roof. And that's one of the biggest discounts. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, built in the 60s or 70s and has no width, has all the old windows, if it has a concrete roof, they're going to get a discount. Plus, if the roof's been replaced since the code changed. And so, it could be, it's significant, actually. I mean, I've noticed it's quite significant and over time. Like it can be, yeah. 200 bucks a month times, you know, 12 months times 10 years. Like, it, it's a pretty major deal with the condos, it seems. Condo insurance used to be pretty inexpensive. And now it's it used just, to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that are, well, it's not likely to, that it will come down, but there are so many factors. There's ways Where to is it? What direction is it facing? Do you have these things? You know, again, it boils down to location and, you know, the schematics of the condo, even what floor you're on. Yeah. The townhouses, too, sometimes have the different policies, like who's covering what. Well, yeah, if it's a townhouse, then, the yeah, person. good point. So with a townhouse, you want to find out if it's a condo association or a homeowner's association. Okay. Right? So if it's a condo association, you won't need the four point, but you still want the wind mitigation. Wind, yeah. So just because it's a townhouse, then you need to find out if a it's lot a of people think, well, condo it's, or well, homeowner's. Says everybody assumes the association covers it. But it has to be in your bylaws. It has, to, you know, these are things that you, you as agents will have to find out for them because it's a pretty big price point. Absolutely, it's Absolutely. it's as though you're um, insuring a single family home. Um, also, carriers look at how the townhomes are listed on the property appraisal. It's a very, very, very gray area. So these are just all the things that just you know make you a more informative agent is to you know obviously find that out. Um, I have people fight me to the tooth and nail up until right before the closing. I said, I said, well, if this is what you want, we're not going to write bad business. When we know that the, ins the inspector from the, the carrier will come out and say, based on what I see, mm -hmm. based on this, based on that, this is written the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You never want to do an injustice mm -hmm. to anyone like that. Yeah, it's nothing so worse than not even, and not pay for an inspection that they don't need, perhaps on um, different things. Yeah. Right, and the other thing, some associations will do roof maintenance, so they'll fix any leaks and do repairs, but they're not replacing it. So that's something to be aware of as well. All right, any questions about any of that? Uh, just about uh, permits, the timeline. How much? Like, let's say. You want to do, let's say, the windows. How much time is from when you? It's going to drive? vary from the city. Yeah, and you've got like to get Palm Beach the, You got to get the drawings down a roof to get a roof permit. It's probably a lot yeah. quicker. You can usually get a roof permit within you know a week or two, a couple of weeks. Oh. Once you and windows. Yeah, windows. I don't think windows take that long um, to get the permit. But you've got to have first of all, you've got to decide on the windows. You've got to have drawings drawn up, and you need to submit it before you submit it to the city. Um, and every city varies a little bit too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it could take a month mm -hmm. to get to get that done. It, it varies. So, yeah. What are the, um, how do you charge as far as um, per inspection, like the general inspection um, versus how much the four point would be? Is it depending, dependent on the unit and the size that the, yeah, it's based it's based on size um most homes for a general inspection are going to be 350 to 400 dollars um with the wind mid and four four point usually looking you know just under 500 dollars for the three inspections okay and then how about um with the additional of termites and mold is that's obviously right. extra yeah so we have a separate termite company that comes in and does a written report so that's 95 dollars um, and then for mold, mm -hmm. again, with, with mold, um, again, inspectors aren't required to look for mold, but everybody, you know, especially in South Florida, um, expects you to, <laughs> expect you to look for mold. So we always do a visual inspection for mold and try and look on the air conditioner for any signs of mold. Um, 
air quality testing where we do um, air samples throughout the home and send them to the lab, that's usually $350. Um, especially recommended if people are, you know, have uh, sensitivities or if they have um, low immune systems, things like that. It's a, it's a good idea to have that done. Uh, sometimes, even though there's no visible signs of mold, sometimes there is elevated mold. Um, I did one like that the other day. I was quite surprised because it was a very clean unit. Um, wasn't that was 15 years old, but um, came back with elevated mold um, throughout it. So you never know, but yeah, so it is an extra, an extra charge if people want to have that, that peace of mind. So that's the 350 is for the uh, mold. Correct. But the mold is being visual with the general. Is Correct. The That's right. Yeah, we always do a visual inspection and try and look as carefully as we can for any signs of mold or water damage. Um, I mean, there are always the other thing is, and there's always not always, but often if people start doing renovations, once they pull the baseboards off or pull the vanities out, <clears throat> pull the flooring off, there could well be mold underneath those. Right. It's not usually doing any harm while it's you know, everything's in place because the mold's not getting in the air. But uh, once they start ripping things open, they, they could well find it. Do you do pool? Or... Yeah, we do. We include pool inspections um, and sprinklers. That's just standard part of our inspection. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's under the general. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. well, any questions for Nancy? <clears throat> Do you want to talk a little bit about? Um, well, you've covered a lot, which is really good, which is super important. A lot of people um, just look at an inspection. Sadly, a lot of buyers are waiving inspections. And that's not smart at all. Okay. Unless yeah. they're Unless going to completely rip apart the entire home mm -hmm. and yeah. renovate it. But you can't insure a home without a home inspection. Um, Unless it's a brand new home. You know, um, but some carers will still request it. Uh, a lot of carers um, are just looking for absolutely positively everything. They want all I's dotted and all T's crossed. It's a very, very challenging time for the, um, the Florida market. Um, Brightway is pretty fortunate in, in um, um, acquiring new carriers that are coming into the States. And um, some carers are actually opening up their area again, particular zip codes, particular counties, because they know that the only ones that's being fed at the moment are citizens. And uh, you know, if they were smart, they would open it up. However, um, due to claims, not so much hurricane, um, but anywhere, anytime a hurricane hits the state of Florida, everyone is affected. As you can tell, if you've been a realtor for quite some time and have sold homes in hurricane season, um, your home will not close if there is an active storm and your policy has not been bound. Mm -hmm. um, they shut down the whole state. Is yeah, it once, fair? Once we're in the, no. we're in the car and that's right? it. No, but these are the things <laughs> that happen. That's what happens when you live in paradise. <laughs> but 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 it's in the panhandle correct it is in the panhandle remember every time a storm hits sadly a storm's hit twice in the panhandle in a very short amount of time every time a storm hits keep in mind that's uh, an indicator depending on how badly the storm was that uh, increased rates happen and because we live in the most beautiful part of the states the number of mm. claims in the South Florida region are astronomical. More claims in our region than anywhere in the state of Florida, which is sad, but um, everybody, um, everybody needs insurance. Um, insurance is a transference of risk. So um, you have to pay for it, unfortunately. And uh, carriers know this. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. It's always better to pay up front because if you do not pay up front, you will really pay in the end um, greatly. And so you got a great guy over here. 
Phil. He is, are you taking a photo of my shoes? I totally am. <laughs> <laughs> they are nice. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> However, um, thank you. Um, so I'll just share that, um, you know, whenever everyone, when everyone works together, um, there's nothing that we can't do, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. And that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Having great referral partners um, is the name of the game. Um, your sphere of influence is, um, says everything about you to your clients and uh, having um, Phil and myself on your side. Um, helping answer questions, educate you as well as your buyers. That's what we're here for. That's what we stand for. We're all about integrity. And uh, the coal agency's business model has always run this way. So if anybody has any questions or may need a little more education, we are certainly here to help. Thank you for having us. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And um, my self numbers on my business card. So if you have any questions, want to reach me directly. Feel free to do that. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Phil. We go as far as um, Port St. Lucie. Port St. Lucie. I have to, I have to do this. Really are. So, um, so Palm Beach, Palm Beach County. Did you know that uh, mm -hmm. the cigar trail? Yeah. Do you do my um, Miami? Not far south. Yeah. We do, we do Miami. We have um, special lives in Pembroke Pines, so we do Miami. From Miami to, like okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.